Very good. Morning brew. Target practice is over, mm -hmm. and we move on. Mm -hmm. uh, want you to meet a, a gentleman who is joining us here uh, on the couch this morning. Uh, Dr. Avinash Akrigar is uh, with us today. He is assistant professor of cardiology, internal medicine, and public health at the University of New Mexico. And I understand that everybody calls you Dr. Ash. Is that That's right? right, just because my name is very difficult to say. Yeah. Great to have you here. Yeah. Great to meet Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. So uh, you have a really wonderful article in August in Local IQ. And uh, that's sort of the uh, impetus behind your visit here. It's, it's all about preventing cardiovascular disease because, as it turns out, it's killing us. And it doesn't have to. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, it's so interesting. There's, there's so many things that we see, like on the Internet and on television, that say that this is going to make you live longer. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but there's really not a lot of data behind some of, the, some of the pills and potions that we see out there. But we actually, as doctors, know how to make, us, make people live longer. Over 800,000 people a year die of cardiovascular disease and stroke. That's one in three deaths. And mm -hmm. we know how to prevent them. It's, it's, it's nearly a preventable disease. So people that are my age, well, are, we're expected to live to about 80 or 90. But people that are in their like 20s, mm -hmm. they could be expected to live to 100 if we prevent the disease and we know how to do it. Yeah. Okay, so it's just, it's, it's better to take care of ourselves than end up Seeing, seeing me, you. absolutely. We don't want to end up with... Absolutely. It, like, I always think of, like, I, as a cardiologist, I end up seeing after, you know, the, the train crashed. Mm -hmm. And then we have to kind of pick up the pieces. It's so much easier to prevent that from happening. And it's... So the American Heart Association, it's kind of like a governing uh, um, body in, in, in cardiovascular disease, has come up with something called Life's Simple Seven. Seven simple steps that we already know how to prevent this disease. And there, it's incredibly well studied. So one is knowing your blood pressure. Just knowing your blood pressure lowers your blood pressure mm. because people don't feel that they have high blood pressure. So if they get their blood pressure checked and they know that number, they'll start to find ways to treat it, both with exercise and maybe medicines. Then there's exercise. We know how much exercise you need. You don't need a lot of exercise. Only about 150 minutes a week, which is you know, 20 to 30 minutes a day, but we're not talking about running a marathon or, you know, right. hitting the gym. We're just talking just about walking. Elevating your heart level a little Exactly. Bit. Ex um, exercising to raise that heart level. And then knowing your cholesterol, we can, uh, once you know your cholesterol, you'll start to adjust your diet. And sometimes in some cases, medicines are needed. And then a couple other things, knowing what to eat, mm -hmm. all, you know, antioxidants, omega, uh, omega fatty acids, nuts. And then, uh, Stopping smoking, we know that is helpful. Um, controlling your sugar, and then controlling your weight. We need to even know what an ideal body weight is. It's a BMI of less than 25. If you do these seven things, the likelihood is you will prevent cardiovascular disease and stroke, which is likely the cause of your death in the future. So mm. you can prevent that. And that's a really good thing to remember. You know, we don't. We want to have a long, healthy life. We don't want to have a, a life that's where you're having to take medicine, where you're having to feel tired and run down and just just bad all the time. I mean, these are steps that are not only going to help your physical health, but they'll help your emotional health and well-being too. Absolutely. Um, it's we all we all know that, uh, especially in medicine, like if you're healthy, you feel better. Mm -hmm. um, once you're sick, it is so much harder to get healthy again. You yeah. can do it. We see patients, and it's sure. a long process of. Cardiac rehab, lots of medicine, seeing me every, mm -hmm. you know, four to six weeks for years. Gosh. But it's so much easier to see your doctor or your provider once a year and then prevent these things with simple steps. And I just want your, want your viewers to know that these aren't hard things to do. No. We're not even talking about, you know, eating a vegan diet. You know, like right. we're just talking about a sensible diet that's affordable, you know. Like, these are the steps that we can take today. Like this cooking is, at home. Yeah. Cooking at home, knowing what you're putting in your yeah. food. Um, and it doesn't yeah. have to, it, you know, like, I think there is some benefits to organic foods, you know, but if, I, if, if people feel intimidated sometimes by going to the grocery store because of the price or they have to get certain items, but they're very expensive, we're not even sure that those are the items, like the organic items uh, that are helpful. Mm -hmm. We know that just fruits and vegetables are helpful. Nuts are helpful. Lean meats. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, you know, there's a strong push to increasing our omega fatty acids 
through fish and certain nuts, and that's really, really helpful for both your heart health and also brain health, too. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you, it's kind of personal, well, I'll give you my, my cholesterol numbers. Sure, go ahead. I, I'm, I'm a 185, which isn't bad. Mm -hmm. But my good cholesterol, I forget what it is, is that the LDL? That's the HDL. H HDL. Mine's on, at the bottom of the scale. Mm -hmm. So what can I do to help to make that, a shift? to yeah. balance that? You know, Larry, that's a great question. So the HDL is the good part of our cholesterol. Right. The LDL is the bad part of our cholesterol. There are some things that we can do to increase the good cholesterol. Good. First is exercise. We know that that will increase cholesterol, uh, the, the good cholesterol. The other thing that will increase good cholesterol, HDL, is probably a very nominal amount of alcohol intake. You know, drinking a glass of wine per day yeah. is actually been shown to be beneficial and actually reduce cardiovascular disease. However, I think I could manage that. I, we ha I, you know, it's one of those things as a physician, you know, you tell yeah. a patient one thing and they're like, oh, well, that just means you can, no. the more Load you up. drink, the better it gets, right? <laughs> no. But it's not the case. So yeah. drinking one glass of wine to two glasses of wine um, f for a man per day is probably beneficial to your HDL and probably beneficial to your overall cardiovascular interesting. health. That yeah. Interesting. I'm glad interesting. I asked you. But there's a recent study, I, I, my wife just pointed it out to me today, it came out this week in Barcelona that showed that that is potentiated if you are a wine drinker, a modest wine drinker, like we said, with exercise. I okay. see. Yeah. So that's the way to do it. Fascinating. Wow. Hey, Dr. Ash, great to meet you. Great. Th and Thank thanks you for much. answering my question. Thank you. And so I much. need to go find all that out for myself because I don't even know what my cholesterol is <laughs> at all. Exactly. I'm no, just running around thinking I'm healthy. Number. No but I numbers. did quit smoking and I quit drinking and I just want to live to be 80. <laughs> That's really what I want. Thanks my for being with us. You're today. very welcome. All right. Well, Thank happy you very back. much. Hey, happy we're birthday, going to continue Shelley. in just a moment here on the Morning Brew.